Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our Quick Shoot series. Okay, you guys voted in a previous video and you didn't pick the NES first, but that's okay. Uh, we're just going to do it now. Um, <clears throat> so, the NES is uh, pretty dirty. We're going to go ahead and clean that up, but I'm not going to do the cleaning process in this video. Um, because I've done another video where I cleaned out an NES, so you guys don't need to see that again. So this video, all we're going to do is disable the 10 NES chip inside this thing. Um, and in case you don't know, I mean, I have said this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, the 10 NES chip is a security chip Nintendo put into this thing to block out pirated cartridges. Unfortunately, now that the system is aging, it's increasing uh, problems with the system. It's making it less and less likely that your games will read when you put them in. Um, when... Nintendo put this thing out in Japan, the Famicom, very different looking system. Um, uh, they only used 60 pins on their cartridges, unlike the NES, which uses 72. Uh, they added extra pins to do extra things. The extra 12 pins mostly do nothing. Um, they're for the expansion port on the bottom that was never used, uh, and the 10 NES chips. So, since some of that stuff really matters, all they do, all those contacts being dirty does is increase the probability that the cartridge won't work. So if you at least disable the 10 NES chip, you'll increase the probability that the system will work. Um, so we're going to go ahead, open it up, and disable it. But before I do that, i got to clean the thing. Okay, I know I said I wouldn't focus too much on the cleaning, but I do want to show you how important this process is. This one on the left is my NES that I've had for years. It's very, very clean. Works perfectly every time. 10 NES chip disabled. This one is my cousin Scott's. Very dirty. Needs to be cleaned. 10 NES chip not disabled. So I'll take this game. This is uh, Super Mario Duck Hunt. Very common cartridge. Put that in there. Put it down. Turn it on. Look up at the TV. Works absolutely first try. Absolutely first try. So now we have to go ahead and do the same thing with the other NES. Give me one second here, I have to take the video cable, plug it in right there, and I guess I'll take the audio cable too, not that it matters as much. Plug that in. Okay, so now we're all set up. Power is connected. Take the same exact cartridge, pop it in, put it in, put it down, turn it on. Well, already you can see a problem. Not working worth a damn on the TV, and the 10 NES chip is going insane. So, not saying disabling 10 NES chip will actually fix this part, but uh, a good cleaning combined with disabling the 10 NES chip, this thing might be a champ once again. So this is that same NES that you saw was not working. Uh, I have gone ahead and already cleaned the 72 pin connector. I've taken everything out, cleaned it up, and then put it back together so that I can show you how to disable the 10 NES chip. I'm pretty sure that it's clean. Now that it's clean, it's going to work. There was a lot of crap on there. And uh, you don't forget, you do not stick Q-tips into the 72-pin uh, connection. You have to use something like this or the credit card method, but that's a little bit harder with an NES. You'd have to take it apart. But again, go see my uh, cleaning an NES video if you want more information on that. So I want to show you firsthand what the 10 NES chip does. Right now, neither of them has a game in it, okay? So when you turn on a stock NES that has no game in it, this is what happens. It powers up and then blinks. The reason it does that is because the 10 NES chip inside doesn't know what the hell is going on, so it keeps resetting the system. It's like you just keep pushing this over and over and over. It thinks there's a pirated game in there. Obviously there's not, but that's what it thinks. Now, if you do that with a uh, system that has had its 10 NES chip disabled, it never blinks. Ever it doesn't care about that anymore because the 10NES chip doesn't exist. Or well, it exists, it just isn't attached anymore. Which means, whenever you play the NES and you've put a cartridge in, and you see that thing on the screen where it just you'll see the game, then it goes away, sees the game, goes away, this one will never, ever, ever do that. That's the 10NES chip. This one, however, would still do that. So you have your NES and you want to take the, the top off. Uh, you would go to the bottom, and there's six group ports. One there, 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 and there. And uh, fortunately, the NES uh, used standard Phillips screw, uh, screws, and so you can use a regular screwdriver, unlike the rest that all use a uh, game bit. So that's convenient. So once you take the six screws out, you can just easily take the lid off, 
and then there you go. You just have the inner workings of an NES. And uh, we're going to need to remove the RF shield. So there's a screw here, here, here in between the RF shield and this like metal thing. One back there, one back there, two on the side, and then there's one behind the RF right there, wedged down there. You'll probably need like a, little, a, like a smaller screwdriver to get to that. And uh, another one wedged right behind the uh, audio of the composite area. Again, you probably need a screw, smaller screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Okay, once you've removed the screws, the RF shield should just pop right off, unless it gets caught on that. Yeah, it comes right out. And then you'll be left with, uh, yeah, the uh, tray there. Now, the tray has to be removed. There are six screws on the tray. Two down there at the bottom, two there, and two there. Now, the bottom ones up here, see this one and that one, are both a different length. They're longer than the rest of the screws, so remember that when you're putting it back together. But the rest are the same. Okay, so once you've removed the screws, you just take this off, which uh, requires a little bit of pushing. There you go. comes out easily. And then you're left with the board. So what you're going to want to do, I find the easiest way to get to the board is to pull back on the composite signal area, and then the board just easily lifts up. So now what you have to do is remove this. Uh, you could, if you want to, remove those. Personally, I find that to be a huge bitch, and I don't like to put them back in, so I'm not doing that, which is in and of itself kind of difficult because you have to kind of work around them, but uh, I still personally think that's the easier method, uh, although it's kind of embarrassing me here at the moment. Uh, come on. There we go. There we go. Okay. Gets around it. Um, okay. So, uh, here we are. Now, the chipset that we're looking for is this one right there right you see this big box here the one that's the furthest the closest to this <laughs> furthest the closest to this thing right there at the corner that's the chip we care about now unfortunately the camera I'm using is a piece of crap so it can't focus worth a damn so you're gonna have to do this yourself see this uh, all right the bottom row of pins here you'll see there's one on the left then there's one to the right then another and then another this fourth one, right there, you have to disconnect that. You have to take something and pry that off and just pop it back so that that metal part is not connected to this chip anymore. Um, I will try to show you this close up, but it's, like I said, this camera is a piece of crap. This chip right there, see this is our board? That chip right there, that's the one that we care about. Uh, I know it's blurry because this camera really, really sucks. But um, you can see that there's a metal, uh, a series of metal pins below that chip. You'll see there's one small one all the way to the left. Make sure you can count that. That's the first one. Second, third, fourth. In my case, the chip says 1986 Nintendo 8742. It's right underneath the two. You must take something like a, a screwdriver, whatever, and just kind of get underneath and pop it back. Now I'm not going to do that on camera because just due to the angling of the camera it's going to be way too hard to wedge under that but I will show you what it looks like when it's done. But trust me this is actually relatively easy. Okay I've gone ahead and disabled it. Uh, you can see there's a gap there now. So you count three and then a blank and then it keeps going. I just, uh, you know, here it is. This little stupid metal piece is what causes that problem. So what I did was I just took a flathead screwdriver and I just kind of wedged it under and just worked it around until it popped off. Just be careful not to pop off these other things because that could be catastrophic. So now we're going to go ahead and put it back together. All right, I want to give you guys one little tip when you're putting it back together. The screw that goes right there and right there. Make sure you don't tighten them too tightly. Otherwise, this thing will have trouble sticking down, which is a problem, obviously. And uh, when you're putting the whole thing back together and you put the case on, the same goes for the screw right there in the front. A little bit on the sides, but especially right there. Don't make it too tight or it'll have problems sealing up. Okay, so I've got it back together. Look, and I cleaned it up. Nice and shiny. Alright, but does it work? Let's find out. I've got the NES all hooked up now. Uh, if I turn it on, you'll see that the uh, 10 Nest chip no longer is there. It's not functional because it's not resetting anymore. But... Does the thing work? Does it play games? Got this game. 
same one we tried before, the exact same system, granted a lot cleaner now, and let's see if it works. Put the game in, put it down, and, oh, it works all right. It works great. Controller, yep, game works. It's awesome. See, goes to show you the power of cleaning an NES and removing the, t or disabling the 10 NES chip. This thing did not read a game worth a damn. Now, first try. First try it reads the damn game. So that's awesome. So I hope you guys learned how to disable the 10 NES chip. Um, the other added benefit to this is it will now be able to play those random pirated cartridges that are out there, like the Bible games and some stuff that are like Micro Machine games and stuff that were not licensed by Nintendo. That's a bonus, I guess. It will also be able to play uh, European games, which is something I only learned recently. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, but really, it's the main focus of this is just to make it play these games first try. So again, thank you for watching, and I really hope you learned something. See you later.